Hello and welcome to QKit Tutorials. In this introductory tutorial on QKit or Quantum Kit, we will demonstrate the basic steps on using QKit, building a quantum circuit, running a simulation and analyzing the results. Let's get started with the basic features of the QKit tool, which enables a classical simulation of a quantum circuit. This space here marked with grid lines, we call it a scene. We will build our quantum circuits on this scene. To add qubits, click on this qubit icon in the toolbar with 0 and 1 written on it. Choose the number of qubits you want to add, let's pick 3. And this will add qubits to the scene, represented by these lines here. The numbers here in green are the qubit IDs, and this is how we will identify the qubits from now on, as qubit 0, qubit 1, and so on. The green dots on the qubit that become yellow when we hover over them, we call them nodes. These nodes will connect the qubits to the quantum gates, as we will see soon. But before that, notice these numbers here. They represent a 2 by 1 vector of the qubit state. This follows from the standard convention in quantum physics, where this vector 1, 0 represents the lower energy state 0 on the z-axis of the block sphere, and this vector 0, 1 represents the higher energy state 1 on the z-axis again. Similarly, the states along x are represented as 1, 1 and 1, minus 1, and the states along y are 1, 1, j and 1, minus 1, j. j here is the square root of minus 1 as it is written in Python. So this is how we add qubits to our scene or circuit and set their initial states. Now let's add single qubit gates to these qubits. The icon here that hopefully looks like a gate with a bunch of connections to it has a list of quantum gates that currently is not comprehensive. But there's a workaround that allows us to use any gate we would like and we will discuss that later on in this video. So here you see a list of quantum gates. Let's begin with the single qubit gates. Here is the Adamar gate, the Pauli gates, the phase shifter gates and the rotation gate. Let's add an Adamar gate to our scene. And here it is. But it is not assigned to any qubit yet. If we want to assign it to some qubit, we make sure the gate is selected. This highlight in yellow means the gate is selected, and this is the default when we add a gate from the list. Now we move over to the qubit we want to assign it to, hover over its green node, and when it becomes yellow, click on it. And there, we have this single input Adamar gate assigned to this qubit. If we want to assign this gate to more qubits, we don't need to go back here to the gates icon. Just make sure this gate is still selected, that is highlighted in yellow, and click on another qubit, so qubit 2. Let's look at one more example for single qubit gates. Unselect this gate first by clicking somewhere else on the scene because we are done adding qubits to this gate. Go back to the quantum gates icon, and let's choose a rotation gate this time. Now it asks for some information on the rotation angle theta and the direction of the axis on block sphere about which the rotation will be carried out. Let's say 1.57 in radians for theta. We could also have said 3.14 over 2, or pi over 2, or 2 pi over 4, or any other mathematical expression that helps us evaluate theta. Let's just keep it at pi over 2. And similarly for the axis, let's pick a rotation about x-axis which has Miller indices. 1, 0, 0. We could also have said 1, 0, 0 without the commas or simply 1, 0, 0. Just make sure there are three numbers corresponding to the Miller indices of the rotation axis. Say OK here and we have on our scene a pi over 2 rotation gate. As before, the gate is already selected that is highlighted in yellow. So we now select the qubit we want to assign it to. So qubit 1 click on it. Okay, again click elsewhere on the scene to unselect this gate. Let's move on to entangling gates now and apply them to these qubits after these gates here. So we add a new event to our circuit by clicking here, the icon that looks like a calendar event. And there, we have new nodes ready to add more quantum gates to these qubits. Let's pick an entangling gate now, say C0. It's on the scene and selected already by default. So go to the node of the qubit we want to use as control, say qubit 1, and say the target is qubit 2 here. So we click on the qubit 1, don't release the cursor, but drag it to qubit 2, 
and release it here. And we have an entangling gate that tells us that it's a C0 gate with the control at the smaller circle and target at the larger circle. Click elsewhere to unselect the C0 gate. Now let's add more qubits to the circuit. And here they are. Now let's try one more entangling gate. Say C phase gate. It asks for the phase angle. Enter pi. OK. So again, the gate is selected already. This time, let's say qubit 4 is control and qubit 3 is target. So we click on qubit 4, drag, and release at qubit 3, and we have a control phase gate. And unselect the gate. Let's add one more event or stage to the circuit. Then check out the multiple input gates, like the QFT or quantum Fourier transform. It takes in several qubits as input to compute the Fourier transform. Pick the QFT gate from the list of quantum gates. It is selected when it appears on the scene. And click on the nodes of the qubits we want to input to this gate. We can just keep going to select any number of qubits we would like. When we are done, just unselect this gate. There's one special multiple input gate, the measurement gate. To check that one out, let's add another event to our circuit. Pick the measurement gate from the list of quantum gates. It is selected already. Now assign it like any other multiple input gate. Let's say we want to measure these three qubits here. Note that when this gate is applied, the quantum states of these three qubits collapse to some random state. OK, before we proceed further, let's just initialize this state to 0, 1 instead of 1, 0. Now we are ready to simulate this circuit. It's a nonsense circuit only used for demonstration, so don't expect any cool results. Go to the Run button here in the toolbar, click on it, and the simulation is complete when we see these buttons for the states here. Click on any of these buttons and we have the choice to visualize the quantum states or see the text. The distribution plot shows us the probability distributions of quantum states listed here on the x-axis. It is simple, practical, and easy to read. Note that in this representation, the most significant bit is qubit 0, the topmost qubit. The amplitude plot carries a lot more information and needs some explanation. For each quantum state in the basis, written on the x-axis, there are typically two bars, one above zero axis and the other below the zero axis. The length of the bar above zero is the magnitude of the real part of the complex amplitude of the quantum state, and the length of the bar below zero is the magnitude of its imaginary part. In both cases, the colors represent their signs. The bluish-green color means a positive value, and this shade of red implies a negative value. This plot is more useful when the effect of quantum gate is only to change the relative phases of these states. We also have access to the raw text with this option here. This is the same information as the amplitude plot in text format. Note that there is information only about two qubits here, that is the number of bits in these binary representations. It, that is because we already measured these three qubits and collapsed them to some random state. We can also look at a state at any other stage in the circuit. And here we have information from all five qubits. So that's how we build quantum circuits and simulate them on QKit. Let me now show you some other useful steps that might help you work easily with QKit. If you want to save this circuit to a file, click here on the Save icon and save it to a convenient path. You will see the path of the saved file here on top. We can wipe the scene clean if we want to start all over. Click on this clear button that looks like a bin, and the scene is clear. We can load circuits into the scene with this open button. Let's pick the sample circuit we just built, and it's on the scene. And again, it's path on the top. 
If the fonts of the circuit are too big or small for you, you can go to the Qkit setting here and enter the font you prefer. That's too small. Let me increase it back to 21. Okay, let's see how to delete the elements of the circuit now. To unassign a gate from a qubit, just click on the node and it's gone, unassigned from the qubit. And here is the unassigning on a multiple input gate, the QFT. Simply click on the nodes of the qubits we want to free from the gate. To delete a gate, we select the gate, say C phase, note the highlight in yellow and hit the delete button on the keyboard. To remove a qubit, hold the control or command key on your keyboard, hover over the qubit you want to delete, and when it is highlighted, left click the mouse and the qubit is deleted along with the C0 and rotation gate that were on it. Let me clear the scene to cover one of the features we find cool in QKit. It is the ability to customize gates and import them into our circuits. Let's check that out. Say we need a swap operation and we cannot find it in the list of quantum gates. We will prepare our own swap gate. It needs two qubits and three C0 gates. Let's add the first C0 gate, add an event, add the second C0 gate. Note how we are repeatedly using the gate by keeping it highlighted here so we don't have to go back to select the gate again. Add another event, another C0 gate, and we are done. This is a swap gate that swaps the states of qubits 0 and 1. Let's quickly check to be sure it works. Change the input on qubit 0 from state 0 to state 1 and run the simulation. This is our input state 1 0. Note this most significant bit here corresponds to qubit 0 which is in state 1 and the next significant bit corresponding to qubit 1 is in state 0. OK. And here is our output state. It is 0, 1. So the qubits are indeed swapped, and it works. Go ahead and save this circuit, which is a swap gate, as swap. OK. Let's clear the scene again and make a new circuit. Let's pick three qubits, initialize qubit 0 to a 1 state or test. Let's say we want to swap qubit 0 and qubit 2 using our custom gate. Go to the list of quantum gates, pick the custom gate. It asks for the circuit corresponding to the gate. Select the swap file and it is loaded on the scene. It is selected by default, so we can go ahead and assign it to qubit 0 and qubit 2. And run the simulation. So here we initialized our state to 1, 0, 0 with qubit 0 in state 1. And after the swap, we expect the qubit 0 to be in state 0 and qubit 2 to be in state 1, which is the state 0, 0, 1. Let's check that. And that's what it is. This is a simple example, but such custom gates can become handy when using more complex circuits like period finding for Shor's factorization algorithm, where you can repeatedly use the swap gate several times instead of defining three C0 gates multiple times. So that's about the tool for now. We're continuing to work on it and we'll be posting separate videos as we add new features to the tool. Check out the QKit tool yourself. The link is included in the description below. It comes with all dependencies installed. So simply launch the tool and get started. We would love to hear from you about your experience with QKit. Hope you found this video useful. Have a good day.